Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, let me start with a, what I think is a straightforward question followed by a much more complicated one. Eighteen of my colleagues, Senate colleagues, joined me in a letter uh, calling on regulators to provide a more significant reduction in the reporting burden of our smallest banks in the first and third calendar quarters as required by uh, Section 205 of 2155. Um, we're looking for a, a, a greater difference in those reporting requirements than what has been proposed. According to the current proposal, banks with less, those smallest assets would save only an average of 71 minutes per quarter. So not a significant change based upon the proposed rules. Can you speak to whether you think our, our concerns about our smallest banks and their call reports have been addressed? Senator, as you mentioned, that rule, we put that rule out um, uh, for, com for comment. We got a lot of comments and got your letter, and we're carefully reviewing those comments. And I think what we're trying to balance is um, we're trying to find the right balance, and we'll certainly take in into account y y the comments that we get. Well, I appreciate that. I would want you to do that. Uh, but if the end result of, of 2155 is as modest as this appears to be, we've not achieved our goal. That can't be the congressional intent, at least in this instance, on this topic. So let me reiterate that. Then let me talk about what I think is at least a difficult topic for me to have a conversation with you about just because of its complexity. A key goal of this legislation was to provide qualifying community banks relief from the complexities and burdens of current risk-based capital rules. But we, of course, want to ensure that they maintain a high quality of capital consistent with the current rules. The recent interagency proposal for community bank leverage ratio allows certain banks with less than $10 billion in total assets to elect to use the CBLR instead of the current uh, risk-based capital requirements if the CBLR ratio is above 9%, the current ratio be required being 5%. So under the new proposed framework, a bank would be considered less than well capitalized if it fell below 9% uh, and hasn't opted out of the CLBR, that would then trigger certain restrictions and requirements. As currently written, the proposal seems to dangle the incentive of reduced regulatory burden, but with capital requirements 4% higher for our small banks to qualify. Would it not make sense to leave the existing PCA framework unchanged, allowing small banks to maintain well-capitalized status and begin reporting capital ratios under the current risk-based capital rules when CBLR falls below the 9%? That's, that's another rule that we have out for comment, obviously. And uh, is it, Senator, can I ask, is that a comment that you have? That you have uh, if we haven't, we can. Yeah, I, I would encourage you to do so. We're, we're you know, these are, these are, we, we think these are really important tailoring proposals, and, and they're obviously mandated by 2155, and we want to get them right. So, um, I, I understand your question, and, and you know, we'll look carefully at that. Uh, all of the uh, financial institution regulators working well together in implementation of 2155. I believe so. Yes, I think we share the the goal of implement. First of all putting a very high priority on implementing 2155, but also on, on tailoring. You know, we, for, for smaller banks, um, I think all of us feel that there's, there's a lot we can do without under, undermining safety and soundness, and we want to find those things and, and do them. I appreciate that approach. Um, I've had many conversations with regulators for as long as I've been on this committee and in, in the Senate, and it is something that is always, and I'm not suggesting this at all about you, but it's always something that is highlighted, certainly when talking to me about its importance, but it's hard to find change that has occurred um, voluntarily by regulators to make the burdens less on our community banks. And that's why 2155 was so appealing to me is that we'd fail generally to get regulators to change their behavior, and 2155 seems to me to be the option, the, the only option that I've seen that actually might force change when it's been so reluctantly to arrive. Uh, so I care a lot about that. In regard, in, in this 15 seconds I have left, I would remind you that agriculture, as you and I visited about last time we talked, is in significant, uh, faces significant challenges. I want to make certain that our 
our community banks, our relationship bankers don't lose the ability to consider character and history, reminds you that we have generational bankers along with generational farmers whose grandfather bankers have taken care of grandfather farmers <coughs> and down through the generations that's continued and our community bankers know who has character, who has ability to pay, who has the history to demonstrate that and we can't tie their strings or the agricultural challenges the economy faces today, ag country's problems will be significantly exacerbated if you take away the ability to take into account those uh, factors that are not uh, crossing a T and dotting an I. Thank you.